दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना ईमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्को वफा रखना ईमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्को Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dear viewers welcome back to another episode of Friday sermon for kids this week we're going to be discussing the life of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just around the time of the treaty of hudaybiyah so ahla rohan are you guys ready oh yes i love hearing about the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam me too what's so special about this journey so this journey was a good lesson on trust in allah patience and unity among the muslims but before we get into our discussion let's start by hearing what blubber hazur said on friday riwayat aur tareekh se pata chalta hai ki a hazrat sallallahu alaihi wasallam ek khwab ki bina par a hazrat sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne ek khwab ki bina par سفر ہدا بھی اختیار کیا روایت ہے کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو خواب میں دکھایا گیا کہ آپ اپنے صحابہ کے ساتھ امن کی حالت میں اپنے سروں کو منڈواتے ہوئے اور بالوں کو اترواتے ہوئے مکے میں داخل ہوئے ہیں اور یہ کہ آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بیت اللہ میں داخل ہو گئے ہیں اور اس کی چابی لے لی ہے اور میدان عرفات میں وقوف کرنے والوں کے ساتھ وقوف کیا وہاں ٹھہرے اس پر رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے اہل عرب اور ارد گرد کے بادیہ نشین لوگوں کو بلایا تاکہ یہ سب لوگ آپ کے ساتھ نکلیں سو دا ٹریٹی آف ہدیبیا واز اگریڈ ٹو ان سکس ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹوئنٹی ایٹ اے ڈی دیٹس آلموسٹ فورٹین ہنڈریڈ ایئرز گو ناؤ اور جسٹ فیو ایئرز اوے فرام دیٹ اینڈ دس واز ایکچولی ریویل ٹو دا ہولی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ان دا قرآن Uh, in Surah Al-Fat, which is chapter 48. And just in the second verse, Allah Ta'ala says, Verily, we have granted you a clear victory. And for a bit more detail on what Hudaybiyah was, let's go over to Arham for this week's word of the sermon. Jazakallah Yasubay, today's word is Hudaybiyah. Hudaybiyah was the name of a place near Mecca, known for its well that provided water to travelers and pilgrims. It became very important in Islamic history because it is where the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was signed between the Muslims and the Quraysh. Jazakallah, back to you guys. Was it really a victory? I thought treaties meant both sides had to agree on things. Yes, so in this case, the treaty that was agreed to was actually putting a lot of difficulty on the Muslims. But Allah Ta'ala knows what's best for us. And the one really important part of this treaty for the Muslims was that it allowed for peace and allowed for the spread of Islam. Oh, so even when things seem hard, we should always trust in Allah. Exactly. Allah Ta'ala knows what's better for us even more than we do. So do you guys know how many Muslims joined the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this journey? Hmm, maybe 1,000? I think more, maybe 1,700. Well, you're both right. The thing is, this was so long ago that we don't have the exact numbers. No one was there standing, counting, oh, there's this many people. So we rely on experts, people that know the history, that have read all the things written from around that time. And Hazur mentioned in his sermon, 1,200, 1,300 as well. So the range... that we have is anywhere from 1,000 to 1,700. Now, all those Muslims that were with the Holy Prophet Wasallam, they also were going to go do Umrah. And this also being a treaty for peace, they did not travel with any weapons. They only had uh, sheathed uh, swords with them for protection. And that's, again, peaceful. We only will use that if we absolutely have to. But wasn't it dangerous to travel without weapons? 
It was, but the Holy Prophet ﷺ wanted it to be a peaceful journey and he wanted to avoid conflict. And on the route, all the Muslims were together and they were reciting, here I am, O oh Allah, here I am. You have no partner, here I am. Wow, that's so powerful. Yeah, and the most powerful part about this is how this has been a theme with all of the different parts of the journey of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. His trust in Allah every step of the way is a very good example for us. And it shows again when the Muslims ran into some trouble. So in those days, you had to carry your water. There's no gas stations where you can grab a water bottle, something like that. So they came to a point in their journey where a lot of the Muslims had run out of water and the Holy Prophet ﷺ was the only one with a little bit of water left in his vessel. Oh no, what did they do? So the companions went to the Holy Prophet ﷺ and they told him about their problem. They asked him for help. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ dipped his blessed fingers into the vessel. And as he did, it was like there was water flowing from his fingers. And everyone that was thirsty was able to drink as much water as they needed. And they were able to do their wuzu, their ablution before prayer. Wow, that's incredible. It shows Allah's blessing upon the Holy Prophet ﷺ. And it also teaches us to always turn to Allah when we're in trouble. Exactly, Ahla. And Hazur mentioned that even if there had been 100,000 Muslims, they would have had their fill of water as well. So before we continue, let's see how well you guys remember what Hazur mentioned in his Friday sermon. And for you guys at home, this is a way for you to practice what you learned as well. So we'll start with you, Rohan. What does Hudaybiyah mean? Hudaybiyah is the name of a well that travelers used in early Islam and that's where the treaty was made. Perfect answer. Ahla, what chapter of the Holy Quran did Hazur mention? Hazur mentioned Surah Al-Fat and it talks about the treaty in there and Fat actually means victory. Exactly. Rohan. How many Muslims joined the Holy Prophet ﷺ on his journey? Depending on different reports, there was 1,000 to 1,700 Muslims. Perfect. Ahla, what was the miracle that was performed by the Holy Prophet ﷺ? So when they ran out of water, the Holy Prophet ﷺ put his blessed fingers into the vessel and water began coming through his hand into the vessel. That's four in a row. Let's see if you guys can get a perfect score this week. Rohan, what didn't the Muslims carry with them on their way to Mecca? The Muslims didn't carry any weapons because the Holy Prophet ﷺ wanted to show that this was a peaceful journey. Perfect score this week. You guys are fantastic. And just to continue off of that, so when the Quraysh found out that the Muslims were coming to Mecca for their Umrah, they wanted to stop them in some way. So they sent a whole group of soldiers to kind of guard the most common route, the route that everyone would take. But the Holy Prophet ﷺ, in his wisdom and always wanting to maintain peace, chose an alternate route. So he went a different way to avoid any form of conflict. So he avoided fighting? Yes, Ahla. The whole point in Islam is peace. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ always wanted peace and he always wanted the solution that would have no conflict. So before we end, there were two people that beloved Hazur mentioned at the end of his Friday sermon. There was Shahriyar Rakeen Saab and Abdullah Odeh Saab. What do you guys remember from that? I remember that beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper, mentioned, Shahir, mentioned Shahriyar Rakeen Sahib from Bangladesh. He was a young man in love served serving the Jamaat and was regular in prayers. He was injured while protecting an Ahmadi property that was under attack by non-Ahmadis and was injured and was Yeah, lost. so he was injured and he was in the hospital for a little while and unfortunately those injuries were very severe. So he is now one of the martyred. Uh, he passed away. But you also have to remember that his martyrdom is his fulfillment of his wish to serve Jamaat, right? So Ahla, is there anything you wanted to add for Odeh Saab? 
Abdullah Asad Ode was a long-life devotee from Kababir who served the Jamaat in many ways, including writing articles and translating religious texts. Exactly, Ahla. He always stayed firm in his faith despite all the challenges. And Hazur Eid Allah Ta'ala bin Nasir Aziz also mentioned that we should keep him in our prayers and pray for his forgiveness and pray that his family follows his example. Because both of your recaps take a lot of detail into how these people were really good role models. We had uh, one person that sacrificed their life for Jamaat in, through martyrdom, and we had another person that sacrificed for Jamaat through their hard work. They're both serving Jamaat, right? Now we have the examples of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have the example of the Promised Messiah Islam. We have the example of Huzur, but we also have everyday examples. And these people that Hazur mentions in his Friday sermons, sometimes he'll mention people that are still alive and some of the sacrifices they're making. Sometimes he'll mention people that passed away and the sacrifices that they made and the work that they did for Jamaat. These are always good examples for us to learn from. Now, let's get into the recap. So I hope everyone at home has been listening closely and they also listened to Hazur's Friday sermon. So let's start with you, Rohan. What did you learn this week? I learned that the Holy Prophet ﷺ performed miracles like increasing water for his companions and avoided conflict when the Quraysh tried to stop them. Ahla, what about you? Today we learned about the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, where the Muslims went to Mecca to perform Umrah. The treaty is named after a place called Hudaybiyah, and it teaches us the importance of patience, trust in Allah, and seeking peace. Good points. I'm so glad you guys were able to learn this much from Hazu's Friday sermon. Jazakallah, both of you. Those were great points, and it's great to know that you understood what Hazu was talking about. And for you guys at home, thank you for joining us. Until next time, Allah Hafiz. مسلسل رابطہ رکھنا امام وقت سے ایک رشتہ عشق و وفا رکھنا دلوں میں پیار کی خوشبو تو ہونٹوں پر دعا رکھنا امام وقت سے ایک رشتہ عشق و وفا رکھنا امام وقت سے ایک رشتہ عشق و وفا رکھنا